What's up everybody, it's Jake Gordon again. Welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to literally break down my winning formula for my campaigns on um, pretty much every store that I've been using for the last couple of years and still using today in 2020 and will still use for years to come um, that I rinse and repeat. So, you know, this is going to be on a store that I'm making 50,000 um, in one month. The store's been active for about two months. Um, since I started it, just Google ads, just Google shopping ads with Bing ads on the side. But yeah, I'm going to give you, you know, my exact template that I use for each of the campaigns. Because a lot of you guys have been asking and I know this will help, um, you know, a few people just starting on Google ads because there's not much people that break down their actual formula. Um, quick disclosure. This is just what I do remember, and I've tested a bunch of other students that I've got right now. Um, you know, this is just what I've found that works the best. There's going to be other ways that you can definitely test, but, you know, this is what works for me and what I'll currently be using, you know, probably throughout, you know, the next few to maybe, you know, even 10 years because I can't see it changing every time. Um, yeah, so in this store, I'm going to give you a general store in this example. Um, I'm going to show you the store as well. So let's just break down some transparency, as we always do. Here's the store that we're talking about. Um, Yesterday, super nice day, did 2.7K, actually did 2.8K, um, but we had a little cancelled order, so, you know, 2.7K, and just to give you some proof, boom, 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 there you go, there's the 50 grand in one month, so, you know, doing consistently ups and downs for sure, but we're, you know, hitting about 2K pretty much every single day, um, just shy of at 1.9K, obviously we've had a couple of good days, we're hitting 2.4K days, 2.6K days, 2.7K days, um, you get the gist of it, so, we're going to be breaking down the, the strategy for this store. Like I said, this is the strategy for every single store. So, you know, let's dive into it and, you know, let's get it going. So with this store, it's a general store. So this will still work for a niche store. It'll still work for one product store as well. So don't worry about that. So with this store, we started with 30 products in the testing campaign. Okay, so these are just generic products with a wide range. So they can ger gen range from like, you know, dog toys all the way to like, you know, women's leggings, let's just say. So, um, Currently selling on Google, just optimize them. So we got these products from stores currently selling on Google. Um, and how we know how to do that, if we see ads from Google, it's literally that simple. They're ranking, probably making some sales on Google. So that's how I find these products. Um, and all we do is we make like a hybrid version. So we try and make it a little bit better if we can. So better keywords, better images, um, you know, you get the gist of it. So that's all we do with this store. Like I said, it's not gonna work for every single product, but if you do it in this way when you're testing, you'll be for sure like super profitable. For that store example, we were, we've done about 15K net GBP for that month. Maybe I think it's like 14K with, you know, with the fees and obviously all that. So we're doing super well, um, over 20% margins. Um, just what you want for a store that's just started. Obviously, once we scale and scale and scale it up, you know, this margin should start to get a little bit better. Or even if the margin stays the same, the sales are going to be better. So the margin will you know, automatically be better. So what we do is we start super simple. Um, 0 0.24 max CPC, um, maximize clicks for this example. This is GBP, remember. So if you're in USA, you know, convert to USA, I think it's about 0 0.30. If you're in, you know, Canada or Canada, however you say it, it's going to be about 0 0.35, maybe even more. So just make sure you're converting this because 0 0.24 will probably be too low for like, um, if you're bidding in um, Canadian currency, right? It's probably going to be too low because the currency exchange is, you know, way different. So make sure you're um, making sure that yours is in the right currency. Um, so. I always start with a £20 daily budget. Now, you know, people might think, oh, wow, that's £600 a month. I can't afford that. Remember, this is Google Ads. Like, we only pay per click. So it's not like Facebook, we're getting rinsed, like, immediately. We only pay per click. So, you know, it doesn't mean we're going to spend £20 a day. Like, when I start, first started the store, we were only spending, like, maybe a £1, £2 every day. And once we start to, you know, get some more clicks, more momentum, hopefully we're making sales as well, and uh, then we'll start to hit the threshold. But it's not like you spend £20 when you choose £20 because it's only charging per clicks. So just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, we want to scale this up. So you know, we want to keep doubling this once we're hitting the threshold of that daily spend because we want this to run 24 seven. We never want this to stop. If the campaign stops at about, you know, seven, eight, nine PM because you've hit that budget um, as you're running this for a couple of weeks. Um, you don't want it to stop because it's really bad for optimization and it has to kick back in again at, you know, midnight or 1, 1 AM. It's not ideal, so just make sure this is always running, um, and it's very easy to do that. So just keep up in the budget if you're spending it on the previous day. Look at your previous day's data. If you're spending twenty pound, you're at a daily on daily budget. Put it at twenty five, okay? So very very slow increases. Um, so the testing campaign housekeeping, um, super super simple. Make sure you're cutting products that spend your margin. There's no excuses because you, if you let products run, if you've got a twenty pound margin or a thirty pound margin, you're letting these products run for fifty, sixty pound with no sales you're just wasting the ad spend that we could have used for the products as getting new sales right so 
if it spends a margin, in my opinion, it's had enough clicks and it's just determined a bad product um, in this case. So I don't waste money on these products. I let them spend the margin though. So vice versa, do not cut too soon. So I've seen dudes also do the vice versa of this and cut maybe after like three pound, four pound um, of spend, which you're not giving that product enough time to like get sales. And if you're cutting it too early, um, you know, it could be a potential winning product. So you've got to let it, you know, hit the fine line of spending the margin. That's just my rule of thumb. And I think that's a fair way to test a product. Um, SPC, so what we also want to do is once we get products that get three profitable sales, we want to take these out the general test campaign. And I like to use a duplication method. Um, you can do a brand new campaign if you want, but I dupe the test, the all products test campaign that we've just created here. And then on that to SPC, let's just say it was a pet product, for example, obviously I call it pet product. I call the, uh, the ad group, um, the pet toy, whatever we're selling. And then in product groups, what I'll do is I'll, you know, filter it by this item ID, but then I'll exclude everything else in all products. So I've duplicated it. All the products are still going to be in this campaign, but they're going to be turned off, but they're still going to be testing all products test campaign, if that makes sense. So I, it's a little bit hard um, when you're first starting out the duplication method, but it always works so much better for SPCs. Um, I've tested this so many times, brand new campaigns, brand new SPCs are using the duplication method. So always works a little bit better, always seems to pick up a little bit faster and it almost feels like it keeps the data um, of the three th the three sales that you've got in the, uh, the general test campaign. So I always do that on every single, you know, SPC. SPC housekeeping, housekeeping sorry. Native keywords, so every three to five days you want to be coming into this um, SPC and you want to be under search terms, you're literally going to see um, what people are typing in to get your product. So you want to literally remove everything that's spending too much or not only that, this unrelative stuff, right? Questions, like maybe like other brands, you're literally gonna see every single word somebody has typed in and then clicked in your ad. You're gonna get a lot of silly stuff, like trust me, people are people, but you wanna make sure you're keeping this um, in good housekeeping because if you waste money on this, like, you know, that budget could have went to, you know, the good converting keywords that you've already got. And it's very easy to see because you'll just see all the metrics, see the stuff that's getting you the sales, see the conversion value and literally see all the data. So you just want to turn off everything that's just not related or not, you know, you don't think will bring any sales. Um, it's harder once you start getting like thousands and thousands of clicks because you have to keep on top of this and you might have to go on this every two days. But at the start, you're probably not going to have too much traffic. Um, and if it's only a couple hundred cl clicks every now and then, you can go through that pretty easily, but just make sure you're going through it because if you leave it, then you're going to have like thousands to five thousand, even ten thousand um, keywords there, and it's going to stress you out doing that all in a winner. So just make sure you're you know keeping an eye on it. So for the bid as well, make sure the bid's one penny higher. Um, obviously, and put the priority high if you put the priority medium on this one. Um, budget, it's going to depend. So if I have like a twenty pound here and I'm just starting out, I'll probably just half this and put it at ten. Obviously, once I'm getting more sales and I'm you know spending that budget, which I should be if I'm getting more sales, um, I want to keep doubling this pretty much. Um, and yeah, that's just the best way to do it. I put it up one penny just because it kind of pushes it as well. So if I've got 0 0.24 in this one, I'm going to put all the, the SPCs at 0 0.25 in this case. Just a rule of thumb that I always do. So as well, after three sales, you want to change the bid to manual enhance. This is where it gets a little bit more fun because now you're changing the bids. Um, and manual enhance is actually designed to give you conversions, but you need, in my opinion, at least three sales in the SPC. So you've already had three sales in the general test, remember, but now we've got three more sales in the SPC. It's not going to count as six. It will still be counting as three because it's a new campaign um, primarily. So after three sales, then I turn on manual enhance. What manual enhance will do, it will bid a little bit more if it wants, um, but it's only going to do that if it thinks it's going to get a sale. I think it's about 30% more it'll bid. So if we're bidding like 0 0.30, um, USD, probably, I don't even know the mass, I think it's allowed to bid 30% more, so probably 0 0.40, um, but that's a good thing because it's only going to do that and it's going to get smarter and smarter and smarter each sale um, if it thinks it's going to bring a sale and vice versa, it'll bid super low, um, sometimes it's 0 point, you know, 0 point a penny pretty much if it just thinks that keyword's unrelated, so you know, it's going to you know do both of these things, which is super nice. Um, after this, once we get 50 sales, so it's kind of like 3 to you know 50, so 47 more sales after that, um, target rules, that's the kind of last stage for my bidding strategy. Um, what you want to do um, is literally look at the last couple of weeks and just look at your ROAS, right? So how much are you getting out of it um, with your conversion value? Um, so if you're getting like a 300% ROAS, put that as 300%. If you're getting a one pound in, three pound out, put your ROAS at 300%. Don't go super high. I've made this mistake recently when I tried to push it a little bit high 
I was getting about, about five pound out, so one pound in, five pound out. I put it to seven pound out, and what actually happened, it didn't kill the campaign, but it was afraid to spend. So make sure you're not putting it too high, and vice versa, don't put it too low, or it'll just go through your budget. So it's very easy, just look at your numbers, just look at your metrics, and you'll see exactly what you wanna do. And obviously, as your rose is getting better, you wanna come back in here and put it up maybe you know 50% each time. So instead of 300%, go 350 once you're getting better results. Um, yeah, and that's that for that one. And um, Bing as well, so once we're at this stage, once we've um, you know fully maxed out, we're still con constantly tested and still improving our SPC. That's the beauty about this game, like you're constantly, constantly getting better, you're constantly optimizing. And the more optimizing you do, the more profit you're gonna um, for sure get you know, in the long run. So Bing as well, literally just copy and paste in what we did for the shopping, that's all I do. So super easy to do it, just add a new channel for Bing. Um, you're gonna get cheaper sales, but in most cases, you're not going to get as much traffic at the beginning. So just give it time. It's a little bit longer to kick in. But, you know, I'm getting super, super cheap sales. Um, I'm not spending much, but I'm getting a lot of sales for the amount I'm spending. And um, obviously, it's a good thing. I still want to scale this up. Um, but just give it time. It's going to take a little bit longer. Um, and, yeah, just give it time. Skags as well. And um, this is optional. You don't have to do this. On this store example here, we're not using any skags, okay? And um, we can use skags, but we're not planning to use skags yet. We probably will use them maybe in a couple of months once we hit 100k months, but we're not going to use them right now because we're still testing shopping out. So I don't like to really mix them up. You can. The problem with skags is if you do it wrong and people launch skags off the bat, skags, skags are just, you know, single keyword ad groups. They're just search campaigns, nothing fancy about them. But if you do them wrong, they'll rinse you so badly with spend. Um, what you want to do is super simple is, you know, your SPCs, you're going to have winning keywords once you get to the target rows, right? You're going to have all these keywords. If you look at the search terms, all you're going to do is grab the top converting keywords. I like to grab the top seven. So just make sure they've had a decent amount of sales, not like one or two. Make sure they're getting like three to kind of like, you know, sky's the limit. So make sure they're having like three minimum sales for that specific keyword and choose the top seven. That's what I always do. And then you just turn them into keyword um, on the ad group. So super easy to do. But if you do it back to front, you're just kind of guessing the keywords because we let the SPCs in the shopping campaign give us the keywords and then we can turn them into skags. Um, it works a lot better that way and that's what you want to do. So after this stage as well, you obviously want to keep testing. You've probably, you know, got maybe like 10, maybe five, maybe 15 if you're doing well, SPCs and maybe 15 products are cut. So you're out of products. So at this stage, you probably would just, what I want to do is I batch another product. So I just repeat the whole thing, add the 30 products back in. It's going to go right into this test campaign, rinse and repeat um, as soon as I do that. I just keep rinsing, 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 Pete. So may I've got 60, I have 90, 120, 150. That's all I'm trying to do because I want to keep, keep testing. My SPCs are going to keep making me money, but you know, the more little, you know, the more little kind of like, you know, what do we say, boats, if you want to say that for the SPCs, the more boats in, in my moat, the more I'm going to be making, the more comfortable I feel because I, if I only have like one to three SPCs, I can get wiped out really easily and then, you know, guess what? I don't have a business. So if I'm constantly batch testing 30 products and um, once I've fully ran out, I'm going to keep finding more SPCs and my, you know, my sales are going to keep growing. So, you know, that's how you can really get to like, you know, 100K months, 200K months and really the sky's the limit. Um, but yeah, this is my simple, simple template. It's not hard. It's very, very simple. Um, and it's just the fundamentals. This is literally all I'm doing for my shopping campaigns right now and my Bing and my Skags. Obviously, I've got other stuff like Remark and all that kind of stuff. But you can get this working without adding any of that kind of stuff um to be honest because the 50k that you see in that store it's pretty much just all of this there, yes there's some facebook dba but it's probably only a grand worth of sales so just use this fundamentals and you know i promise you you'll get to your kind of results but just make sure that you're keeping an eye on your general test campaign you're keeping an eye on your negative keywords and you should be super super profitable um pretty much every store you do so that's all for this video dudes i hope you got some value and i'll see you in the next one Oh, mm -hmm.